This is David Getoff, and it is uh, uh, currently, uh, let's see, June 16th, uh, 2018. And over and over and over again, uh, people ask me every time uh, another media outlet could be a television network, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, whoever, uh, could be a, uh, a newspaper, uh, LA Times, uh, Wall Street Journal, uh, New York Times, um, could be some radio station, really doesn't matter which. But every time one of these media outlets comes out and presents some expert's view uh, or some currently published uh, research study that shows that either A vitamin or vitamins in general or multivitamins uh, either don't work uh, or uh, reduce life expectancy, they want my comment. And I've never recorded a comment on that, but I think it's time that I do so that it can be up on my website. Because I would say probably every single year, uh, if you're listening to anything having to do with nutrition, vitamins, supplements, diet, uh, you will probably be exposed to somebody or some research study telling you that multivitamins don't work. Uh, that vitamin C doesn't work, that vitamin D doesn't work, um, that taking supplements is a waste of money and doesn't work. And so let me explain to you what's happening, uh, after which time hopefully you will totally understand this and will be able to, if you wish, uh, do your own research and find out why what you were told is complete and utter nonsense and does not hold up to scientific scrutiny. So let's start with pharmaceutical drugs. If a drug is being researched, I don't care what the drug is, I don't care what it does, I don't care if it's an over-the-counter drug or a prescription drug, if a drug is going to be researched, the researchers know that there are a couple of things that are required to be done, otherwise, otherwise the research is completely useless. And the things that must be done in order to give you the information so that the research is not completely useless. And of course, you know, it's helpful if they're open-minded and they're setting up the research correctly, otherwise they still might get bad answers. But what must be done is, number one, you are researching something specific. In other words, you're not researching over-the-counter drugs. That's ridiculous. There are hundreds of them. You're not researching prescription drugs. That would be ridiculous. There are thousands of them. You're researching a specific drug. So that's a very specific chemical compound, uh, which, depending on whether it's generic or whether it's patented, has a name. So, for example, it might be acyl salicylic acid, which is aspirin, uh, or it might be a trade name, uh, like bufferin, uh, or it could be a specific antibiotic, which could be ampicillin, penicillin, cipro, Leviquin, but no matter what it may be, it's one very specific substance that you are researching. That's number one. It's a specific substance. Number two, you must know how it is being taken, or you don't know whether or not the problems are because it was taken wrong. So if somebody takes a specific substance at 25 times the dose that anybody is supposed to take it, and then says this substance hurts people, that doesn't really give you information because nobody was supposed to take it at 25 times the dose that is recommended. So again, number one, we are researching one specific substance. Number two, we are researching the substance, making certain that the people in the study are taking it in a specific way or a specified way, and then they're being followed. Is the dose of the product correct? Is the frequency of the dose incorrect? Are they asking all the right questions as far as what people do and don't feel? Are they making sure that uh, uh, any possible side effects or other things going on are being looked at? So that's the way drugs get researched, and that's the way anything would need to be researched if you want to make sure that the um, results of your research have meaning. Makes sense. Understood. Everybody can figure out that that makes sense. Now, if a study comes out, for example, that says multivitamins don't work, um, 
how was that done? Well, the ones that show multivitamins do work. They are either doing it correctly by researching a number of people that took some specific, just like a drug, specific multivitamin, making sure they were taking it the way they wanted them to take it, and for how many years they took it, and for how many different things they were asking questions about to make sure they knew all the possibilities. But when they show that multivitamins don't work, it's always done with a questionnaire study. In other words, a whole bunch of people that were given questionnaires, one of the questions that they were asked was, do you take a multivitamin? And you check a box that says yes or no. That's it. We don't know which multi. It might be one that is so low in potency that no nutritional biochemist would expect it to help anybody. It might be one that's made by a pharmaceutical company that has F, D, and C food colorings in it, like blue lake number this, or yellow lake number that, or red dye number five or something, which have been shown to be possibly cancer-causing. It might have uh, all sorts of uh, additional chemicals that nobody in the field of nutrition that knows what they're doing would allow into a product that they were testing, like uh, propylene gly glycol, which is antifreeze, or methylopropyl parabens, or any number of different things. So if all they're looking at is a questionnaire for X number of thousands of people where somebody checks the box that says, yes, I take a multivitamin, and you don't know anything else about this person, you don't know which multivitamin it is, you don't know what the dose is, you don't know how they're taking it, I'm sorry, <laughs> but the results of following those people for, let's say, 10 years and seeing if they have more or less of some disease has absolutely no legitimate scientific method of being related or not related to whether or not they happen to take this who the heck knows what multivitamin. And yet that's the research they're publishing and telling you, for example, multis don't work. If they talk about a drug and say this study showed and they mention a drug, that it didn't work. You know they're talking about a specific drug. If they say multivitamins didn't work, I'm sorry, but there are hundreds if not thousands of multivitamins. Which one did you study? How was it taken? How long was it taken? Was it taken correctly? No, that's not what they did. It's just a check mark that somebody took a multivitamin. So all of those studies are bogus. If you ever see a research study that says supplements don't work, or the people taking supplements didn't get a benefit, or they didn't even live as long, look at the, uh, the, the write-up, or listen to the podcast, or listen to the newscast again, and see which specific brand and which specific nutrient. In other words, it could be a brand, a big brand, that has 40 different products. Well, if they don't tell you both the brand and which product, then this is bogus research for all the reasons I just gave. If somebody says vitamin E didn't work, or vitamin E, uh, the people taking it didn't live as long, or had even more of some disease, see if you can find, number one, which brand of vitamin E they used, what dose of that particular brand was taken, how many times a day it was taken, for how long, and what type of vitamin E did they actually use? Not the brand, what type? Well, David, what do you mean what type? Well, the FDA only allows the term vitamin E to be used for uh, alpha tocopherol types of E. However, in nature, there is more gamma tocopherol than there is alpha, Alpha is next, beta and delta are after that, and so when you're taking a fully natural form of vitamin E, and so I'll give you the one I happen to like best, the, it's not the only one out there, but my favorite is Unique E Tocopherols from AC Grace Corporation. It has a very large capsule, if you take a look at it, bigger than anybody else's capsule that says on the label 400 units of E. Why is that? Did they put a bunch of soybean oil in it? No, it's all vitamin E, 
plus the gelatin of the capsule. So why is it so big? What else is in there? Well, there's lots of gamma, and there's a bunch of alpha, and there's some beta and delta, and they leave them in the ratio that's fairly similar to the ratio that they exist in natural foods. And so if you do research with unique E at the proper dose, you'll find all the benefits that have been found with vitamin E. You find reduction of different cancers. You'll find reduction of different heart disease. Uh, but of course, they don't do that. They just tell you vitamin E doesn't work. And usually, those studies were done with too low a dose of vitamin E to do what we know it can do. Uh, they were done only with the alpha uh, version of E. They, will all, they were often done with the wrong analog. In other words, they were done with the unnatural synthetic form of E, which is DL-alpha tocopherol, and ril ends in YL. So that's a synthetic non-antioxidant form that the FDA still allows to be called vitamin E, as opposed to the natural antioxidant form, which is D, not DL, alpha tocopherol, OL, not YL. And so I'm not going to keep going and going and going. We could go into vitamin C. They do research studies where they use an amount of vitamin C that a vitamin C expert would say, well, that's not enough to work. And then they use that lower amount and say it doesn't work. So I could keep going and going and going, but I think you get the idea. If not, listen to what I said again. Research studies need to be on a specific product. They need to be certain that they are being taken in the way they should be taken. They need to be taken the right number of times a day. And they need to follow them properly for a long enough amount of time. So if somebody wants to see, for example, whether multivitamins help people that are taking them, that would be a pretty easy study. They could do it for five years. They simply need to pick a really good multivitamin. I could give them a whole bunch of good brands. Um, they could use uh, Super Nutrition. They've got good brands. Uh, New Chapter has some good brands. Uh, Perk has some good brands. There are a whole bunch out there. And then have people take a specific one for a specific time in a specific way and follow it long enough. It's not being done. So from now on, every time you hear somebody or read something, about nutritional supplements not working, look to see what they did. Did they look at a specific brand and a specific product from that brand? Or did they just look at general things which can't tell you anything in a way that no drug company would ever do it? I think I've covered this enough. I think you get the idea. And I think you can now educate your friends as to why what they think they just learned is wrong. Enjoy your future health. If you're listening to this, you're probably one of the people that already knows more than the general public. You may be one of my students. You may be one of my patients. You may be one of my tens of thousands of people that look at my website. Uh, or who knows? Maybe you just read my new book that I finally, finally wrote after years and years called Abundant Health in a Toxic World. I hope I've been of help. And I hope you have a long, healthy, disease-free, symptom-free life. Thanks for being interested in learning the truth.